In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is a Friday, the eighth of September, twenty twenty three, the feast of the nativity of our blessed Virgin Mary birthday of Mary. And you may be wondering, why are we having this feast on the 8th of September? Who thought of putting 8th of September as the birthday of our Blessed Virgin Mary? It is because on the 8th of December, we celebrate the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Annunciation, so to say, of Mary when her birth was announced, when she was conceived in the womb of Anna, as we know in the Catholic tradition, conceived without original sin. That's the feast we celebrate on 8th of December. Now, when you count from 8th of December, you start moving forward, January, February, March, April, May, up to September, it will be nine months. Time for her coming into the world. Now, we do not have anything said about her birth in the New Testament, but we do have from the Catholic tradition, the Proto-Evangelium of James, known as the Gospel of St. James, which was probably put into its final written form in the early 2nd century. This Gospel describes Mary's father, Joachim, as a worth member of one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Joachim was deeply grieved, along with his wife Anne, by their childlessness. He called to mind Abraham. The early Christian writing says that in the last day, God gave him a son Isaac. Joachim and Anne began to devote themselves extensively and rigorously to prayer and fasting, initially wondering whether their inability to conceive a child might signify God's displeasure with them. As it turned out, however, the couple were to be blessed even more abundantly than Abraham and Sarah. As an angel revealed to Anne when she appeared to her and prophesied that all generations would honor their future child, the Lord has heard your prayer, and you shall conceive and shall bring forth, and your seed shall be spoken of in all the world. And we are told that Anne made a sanctuary in the infant girl's room and allowed nothing common or unclean on account of the special holiness of the child. The same writing records that when she was one year old, her father made a great feast and invited the priests and the scribes and the elders and all the people of Israel. A lot is said in this Proto-Evangelium of St. James. But let us turn to the Quran. I love the Quran because 70 times, in fact, more than 70 times, Mary has been mentioned. The only woman mentioned in the Quran and about her birth, we read this in chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 33 to 36. Indeed, God chose chose Adam, Noah, and the family of Abraham, and the family of Imram over the worlds. An offspring like one another in righteousness. And God is all hearing, all knowing. And when the wife of Imran said, 
Oh, my Lord, I have vowed to you what is in my womb to be dedicated to your service. So accept this from me. Indeed, you are all hearing, all knowing. Then when she delivered her, Mary, she said, Oh, my Lord, I have delivered a female, and God knew best what she delivered. And the male is not like the female, and I have named her Mary, and I seek refuge with you for her and for her children from Satan, the expelled from the mercy of God. And again, in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 37, we read, so our Lord fully accepted her and gave her a good upbringing and put her under the care of Zechariah. Every time Zechariah appeared upon her in the prayer room, he found her supplied with food. He said, oh Mary, where do you get this from? She said, this is from God. Indeed, God provides for whom he wills without limit. This is what we learn from the Quran about this woman, the only woman who is mentioned by name in the Quran. And this woman's birth we honor today. As I say to you all, happy birthday of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Mother Mary Josepha Angeline from Mukumu, Kenya, celebrating her birthday today, take for us the first reading. Nora Lesa from Kasama, Zambia, who celebrated her birthday yesterday, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father John Musonda, a Salesian of Don Bosco, working in Lilongwe, Malawi. Let us pray. Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace that the feast of the nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those for whom the birth of our Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, the time when she who is in leper pains has brought forth. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah, Micah 5, verses 2 to 5a. Thus says the Lord, You, O Bethlehem Ephrata, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in leper pains has brought forth. Then the rest of his brethren shall return to the sons of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And this shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is coming from Psalm 13 verse 5 and 6 and the response is taken from Isaiah 61 verse 10 a and the response is I will greatly rejoice in the Lord I will greatly rejoice in the As for me, 
I trust in your merciful love. Let my heart rejoice in your salvation. I will greatly rejoice in the I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation Hallelujah, 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 Blessed are you, O Holy Virgin Mary, and worthy of all praise. Because from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 16, then verses 18 to 23. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asa, and Asa the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotam, and Jotam the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Ezekiah, and Ezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shatir, and Shatir the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abud, and Abud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azza, and Azza the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Akim, and Akim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Matan, 
and Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife. For what? For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Feast of the Nativity of our Blessed Virgin Mary. And I would like to start with the words of St. Augustine, who described the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary as an event of cosmic and historic significance. He called it an appropriate prelude to the birth of Jesus Christ. She is the flower of the field from whom bloomed the precious lily of the valley, said St. Augustine. She is that flower of the field from whom bloomed the precious lily of the valley, Jesus Christ. That is why our importance cannot be underrated. That is why even our birth cannot be ignored. Because it was God intended. It was God who wanted her, a woman of no significance at all, to become a significant woman who made it possible for all women to be dignified. They did not even require to go to Beijing because we have in the Bible a woman whose yes, transformed the world. Not only do we have in the Bible, we have in the Quran the same thing said about this woman. She is the most blessed of all women. That is why 70 times she has been mentioned in the Quran and through her all women must understand their value. All women must understand that God uses them, uses them to bring about transformation in our world today. Look at all the world leaders that we have today. No matter how male-dominated the world might be, they are all born of women, all of them, from the greatest to the least. All of them are products of women, and they shouldn't even boast beyond what a woman has offered to them. Oh, my word. The birthday of our Blessed Virgin Mary makes us aware of the fact that God raises what seems to be insignificant and makes it significant. We see that in the first reading of today that we read from Prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 2 to 5a, where we hear, O Bethlehem Ephrata, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you, insignificant as you might be, Nazareth, the mother of the ruler shall come. 
What good can come out of Nazareth? Nathanael had told us already in chapter 1 of the Gospel of St. John. What good can come from Nazareth? Oh, something very good came from Nazareth. Mary, a woman who was able to say yes. Now we have so much respect for Nazareth because a woman came from there. Mary, and we can go for pilgrimage to go and find out where this woman was born. Now we have so much respect for Bethlehem because this woman called Mary, went with Joseph and gave birth from there. Oh, my word, this is something, and we can boast today as we celebrate the nativity of our Blessed Virgin Mary about how God operates. His operating system is different from ours. You look at what we have seen in the genealogy story we read today from the Gospel of Matthew. We see God working in between crooked lines, straightening what is crooked, and women mentioned there were not meant to be of any significance. In fact, they were supposed to be ridiculed because of the nature of life that they led, but God raised them up. We see Tamar. A case of incest. We see Rab, a case of prostitution. We see the wife of Uriah, Bathsheba, a case of adultery. We see Ruth, a case of a pagan, still finding a place of significance and becoming the great grandmother of David. We see all that we can talk of as good coming from those who are considered as insignificant. And if you think yourself insignificant, and if you think that you are not worthy, remember the birthday of our Blessed Mary is to raise your way of thinking, is to raise your image and put you on the pinnacles of success, of growth. Your background doesn't matter. Whatever your background, God is able to raise you up if you allow him to use you in your life and work wonders in your life. May the feast of the birthday of our Blessed Virgin Mary change your way of thinking about life and transform the way you look at yourself. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you and happy feast of the nativity of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I.
Good man.